self-love's hard, man. It doesn't always look like a bath and a bath bomb. That to me is like <laughs> terrifying. Welcome to the Recovery Project with Richie Barnett and Mel Abbott. Uh, we are here for another exciting episode and I know nothing about what we're here for. So I'm going to hand over to Richie to share with us who we're meeting today. Well, thanks, Val, for dishing it off. Hey, um, I'm super excited to have Kim Crossman on. Uh, we met on Treasure Island uh, last year, but I didn't realise when I looked at her bio just recently how lengthy it is in terms of her feature films, her short films, and her involvement with TV over the years, notably, obviously, Shortland Street in 2007. I know that with every success in life, there's always some challenge and adversity that people face. And we want to explore that a bit more. But firstly, Kim, welcome yeah. on board. And it's so Thanks nice to, to have you on. What's been going on? Yeah, well, firstly, I just will respond to your kind words. Um, meeting you, I, was, I really struggled on Treasure Island with, I guess, being there, but more so just with myself and having this like huge relapse of anxiety and I just I forever in my heart will be grateful for you like holding space for me and um continuing to check in on me and have a dialogue and be a really positive male role model in my life so I just wanted to like first of all acknowledge that you are so wonderful and you only put goodness into the world and there are many of us who really rely on that so well thank you for that it's, made, it's just made my day. So oh. I, you know, really made my day. And I'm I'll sure go, I'm not the only person that feels that way about you in their life, but yeah. <laughs> so tell me, like, you've done so much. So tell us, what are, you, what are you up to and what have you been doing? There's probably so many things you've done. So yeah. explain that. Well, I guess that's part of my problem is that I have an addiction to um, to living a huge life. Like it really is an addiction for me. Like I just want to be the best. I want to experience everything. I don't want to live a life half lived. So it fits right in. And as an extrovert and someone with a giant ego, it fits right in that I chose a career path that is like film and television. I guess the addiction comes from the fact that I do have depression and anxiety. And for some reason, when you may relate this to sport, but between action and cut is the only time in my life where my brain is quiet and I'm hyper-focused and I'm just in the moment. And I really struggle to replicate that in other areas of my life. As long as I step out of the way, I can really shine and let my talent shine through. And that's my favorite version of myself. It's the moments of stillness and calm that I am not yet, but I'm working on being comfortable because what you don't deal with deals with you. And it's kind of all just waiting there for me to have these moments of relax for it to be like, cool, here's all the stuff you're not dealing with. And so for a long time, I've avoided that. I've avoided that stillness, that rest until I get burnout. And that's kind of been how I've dealt with my mental health in the past. And so now that I'm aware of that, it's kind of this process of undoing and having to actually work through some things, which can feel really overwhelming. And no wonder I avoided it for so long. And why people sometimes never deal with it. Because um, it's the young so important part. though, isn't it? Because like yeah, you say, it if, if you're always running away from your stuff, you're going to burn yeah. out. And that's when chronic health problems happen. A hundred percent. And often people wait till they're really ill before they go, damn it, I'm going to have to deal with this now. But yeah, isn't it yeah. nice to deal with it before it gets that bad? Yeah. I mean, I've still got some stuff to unpack. <laughs> that's, that's the other part about healing, right? And kind of you're like, oh, I thought I realized this was it. And it's like, oh, no, yeah. we it's can go more. further back in childhood. We can find some more shit you can deal with. Yeah. Um, so it's been a... a a journey that I'm I'm definitely working through. I was um, officially diagnosed with depression, um, severe depression and anxiety two years ago. Uh, I prior to that hadn't gone to therapy. I thought that I was doing all the work, quote unquote, or aware of my demons just through acting. You have to have a certain level of self awareness, what you bring, what your triggers are. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a new journey of actually getting professional help and taking accountability of where I'm at and how to learn to interject when I see those like symptoms of slipping into a bad place. 
my close circle perhaps don't always have the right verbiage and perhaps they with all well intention come at me with more solution based things like you should work out do this or you know rather than kind of just quote unquote hold space which is a very American terminology but rather than asking questions there which is very Kiwi of us and it's very in our nature to just kind of want to make me feel better so throw solutions at me what I've found helpful is um is seeking elsewhere ways to help myself via listening to other podcasts and getting better research so that I can come to the people I love and actually prescribe them what it is that I need. So for example, I just went through a a breakup recently and I'm living alone. And I knew that um, my mother would call me immediately and tell me to come home. My best friend would, and that wasn't going to be helpful for me. I wanted, I want people to believe in my journey here. So I set myself up for success by framing that conversation by like, please don't call. I need 24 hours. I know that you love me. Um, uh, I'm really like said what I am. Like, I'm proud of this decision. It's the right decision for me. Um, I'm going to take 24 hours, like would love some compliments because I'm feeling a bit shit um, and just know that you're there if I need it. And so that way they've got all the information. They're not going to call me because I, I couldn't get to that place of having to work through something with someone. And, and it just meant that I got an influx of like, you're a good person, like the compliments. I ask for them now, usually if I need them, because I act off words of validation and I'm not ashamed of that. Like, I need to hear like, <laughs> balance out my own negative self-talk and ask for something like, what is something I'm good at? And hear that. Um, back. So then tell, Kim, then tell me how, like you've got, you receive, validation and from others so how do you do it for yourself so you've got (laughs) quite an inner critic going on so tell me how how do you overweight it how do you do it the other way so I just had an aha moment in therapy today about self-love what I need to work on with self-love is self-trust and I'm going to reframe it as of today as self-trust because The problem is, is I don't trust myself to take care of myself when I'm not in a good place. And that means I'll misbehave. I'll eat bad food. I won't exercise. I'll seek out things that make me feel shit, like looking at exes or their new girlfriends or whatever that might be, like real self-harm kind of behavior, Um, physical self-harm, but like unhealthy behavior. So I need to learn how to set up better habits. I'm working with an accountability coach purely on the basis that I medicate with sugar. So I do 30 things a day, send it to her, which are things like drink eight glasses of like real basic human shit. So I think from today, I'm going to reframe self-love as self-trust because that's a concept I can understand a bit better. I need to get to a place that I trust that I will take care of myself. I freaking love that. I really okay, love good. that. I really, I really that. enjoy that. Yeah, because it's just that, yeah. that, again, it's that accountability that you own that space now, eh? Instead of seeking help, and and of course all our friends are so helpful, but it's yeah. to the detriment of ourselves not to learn that that quiet time is an important time to self-evaluate. Self-love's hard, man. It doesn't always look like a bath in the bath bomb. That, to me, is, like, <laughs> terrifying. Mm. It, it really, my negativity begins and ends with my own achievements of it, things not being good enough. It's perfectionism complexes. So, Do you have a sense of where that comes from? Oh, yeah, I've just always been an overachiever. I think I was always looking from val- for validation from adults. Um, my mother is a ballet teacher. My grandmother was a teacher. So it's always been... And which has been great. I'm a very successful, driven person. Like, it's also something I love about myself. But there's not a lot of it. it, You know, I went to a private school that my mother, you know, spent a fortune on it. So it was always like, if you're going to do something, you're going to do it 110%. And that's where I get my validation from results and affirming dialogue from others. So if you could go and have a conversation with five year old you, (laughs) what do you want her to know? that she didn't know? That's a really difficult question because I am really happy about where I am. I don't carry any resentment. Like I'm so happy with my path and my ups and downs. 
I, I think what I want to say to that, but I don't know if I believe it is like to cut myself a bit of slack or have more grace is what I should answer to that question. But I'm but also what you okay. want to answer. But, but I'm also okay the fact that I haven't and that I'm learning it now as an adult because I think I have a little bit more emotional capacity to really understand what that means. That was like when you're sleeping, the competition comes creeping and I like had yeah. it on my wall and I'm like, no wonder I'm losing the bloody plot. I can't even sleep without being like, someone's going to take it from you. Like, mm. <laughs> you know, like I was just too addicted to quotes and affirmations yeah. and wrote a yeah. book called Love You when I was 24 about like, you know, every minute should be productive. And so I kind of, I just tipped the pendulum too far the other way and I got sick. So I'm just, I don't not like that about myself. I like that I am a go-getter. I just have to try and like find a little bit more balance would be a good word. Totally. Um, and that's what I've seen with my clients. I mean, everyone I see is the chronic illness and okay, I've seen about, about 3000 clients and there were only two. You can diagnose me after this. Tell me all the things. <laughs> yeah. I'm open to feedback. <laughs> well, out of my, you know, 3000 ish clients, there were only two that were type B personalities, the kind of chilled out, laid back, all the rest type A's and, and the, the bigger the type A, the bigger the illness pretty much. Yeah, that um, sounds not being type A is bad. I mean, I'm type A too, obviously. You know, I got ill too. And it's just a, a matter of learning how to regulate how much yeah. your A pattern is at play. But I mean, I love being an A. We're the people that have such exciting lives and we do so much and we live with such passion and intensity. Yeah. But just being able to, to regulate it a little bit better so that you can then... Yeah maintain wellness and balance as well as enjoy your drive and your success when you were growing up Mel were people always like oh she's burning the candle at both ends Would oh that yeah be like totally I've been told that when I learned to walk my I'd get behind my push chair and march across the room I get to the end turn around and march back and I went up and down up and down over and over again and my grandfather looked at me and said whoa she's going to be determined when she grows up like <laughs> you know it was there from the start yeah. but and and then I developed you know chronic fatigue syndrome and spent the whole of my 20s ill so you know but this weekend was my 14 year anniversary of recovery oh so how exciting is that? I'll cheers now I've got water but I'll, I'll cheers to how do you frame fictionism if I know I've prepared and done a good enough job that I can relax in the moment when it's time to perform then I'm like, at this point, it's out of my control and I'm totally cool with it. In our family, we've also, we've always dealt with disappointment by having a shower. Like that is yeah. our family little trick. What a if, good you're, idea. if you're crying, if you are in a shitty mood, if something bad has happened or, you know, I'm frustrated with self, like I have to change my physicality. And that's always in our family by taking a shower, like wash it away. If you're having a cry, I, it was an aha moment to me that people cry and don't go to the shower. Like as an adult, I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> like this idea of like, get it out, clean it away, start again, happy face, which is also probably a little toxic positivity E, but right. um, <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Because that's breaking state, right? And breaking thoughts. We call it break state, breaking state. But um, that's so good. That's such a good good way to do it. You know, jump in Have the shower, shower. Put, put on some music or whatever it is to break state. Yeah. Bloody brilliant. Sure. I like that. Yeah. We're a very hygienic bunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are the, some of the biggest lessons you've learned? Ever in life? Woof. Yeah. Just any, <laughs> in, in, yeah, in life, I guess. Yeah. Um. I'm very much like treat others as you want to be treated. Follow your joy, like always find your joy, find what lights you up. Always be kind. Don't speak ill of others. Um, those would be kind of like my core values. One of my favorite qualities, if there's a fun way to do it in our family, that's the way we're going to do it. Um, so I think for everyone, it's like my biggest like lessons that I've learned is, is finding what makes you tick and making sure your life actually represents and replicates that. Because if you're not in flow with the people you're around, the job you're doing and that, like, it's just going to feel tense and yuck. For people watching this who are also in a depression and anxiety journey, what would be your sort of 
you know, summary message you'd like those people to, to take away? And You're not alone. We all go through it. I think it can be a real gift. Like I'm really learning now that in being quite open and vulnerable and speaking about the yuck side of me, which I'm still very judgy of, but working on, like it, it has provided me the tools to be more empathetic, to create more space for other people. Be open. There are many other ways to seek help that don't just have to look like talk therapy. I, um, I will say living part of the time in Los Angeles, people don't date people who aren't in therapy. That is like a big thing here. Just because they're like, I don't want to take on your shit if you haven't figured it out yet. So like, that's not my department, which is quite a healthy way to approach things. <laughs> like, um, it doesn't just have to be talk therapy. There are so many different ways that you can help heal, um, whether it's a plant medicine or, you know, there's so many different things. So if you do a bit of research, there might be something that fits better with you too. Um, Cause that can be a huge deterrent. People don't want to sit and talk to someone about their childhood. Maybe. That's right. Yeah. And That's I think um, for people to also hold that they can recover, like, you know, so many of my clients have been told you'll never get better. Like um, I can remember one woman, you know, she had depression and anxiety so badly. She was hospitalized over and over again. And her psychiatrist said to her, you're the second worst case I've ever seen and you will never recover. You think, what a message, you know, and, and yet she's, cool. she has made a full recovery after doing my course yeah. and she's working full time again, got rid of the nanny, you know, she's like awesome. living again, but you know, with a lot of people feel this um, sense of, um, well, it's not possible. So, you know, I think holding what do you the tell provision, people in that, like, maybe, maybe this is a richy question too. Like how, how do you encourage people to get to get to a place of hope? Because I would say when people are most depressed, they don't have that hope. So right. how do you doing recovery project interviews? <laughs> we want yeah. to, you know, my, our vision with this is to keep sharing um, the, the stories of people who have found ways to get better and, you know, to say, Hey, you don't have to live with these limits. Three quarters of my clients have been told there is no cure for whatever they have. And yet 80% of them are then getting better. So, you know, we've got to get rid of this message that you can't get better. Um, you got good um, stats you know, here, Mel. Mel's got good stats. Know, totally. <laughs> um, you know, and I think anyone can have a little temporary patch. You're going, mm, I feel a bit crap for a little bit. But if the overall is that your life is good now, you know, that's got to be the goal, hasn't it? Yeah, of course. There is, um, we, we do, I do a bit of work with my King I Am Hope organization and, I think what we've found in their stats is that my, I think we've got to break down that barrier that as parents, we need to see like perfection as mm. um, we, we, they get fear because we just tend to just face them as if nothing goes on in our life that's wrong. Mm. We should be open enough to discuss with our children that failing is okay. And if you fail, let's discuss it. We've had a shit weekend and I can explain what that is, but I'm so happy that you're here talking to me because that is wonderful. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that, that really does normalize that this is, this is life, but we look at it and they look at us going, well, if I tell them this, I'll fear that, you know, something will happen and then they don't come to you. There's an association with, if you go to see a psychologist that you're mentally ill. Mm -hmm. So it's very rare that kids uh, at an early age will come to see a therapist. So you've got to, again, reframe it, change the name and mm -hmm. say a life coach or whatever it is to break down that barrier or else they mm -hmm. do not come and see you. So mm -hmm. all they're after is more love and affection, kindness, empathy mm -hmm. and respect and understanding their needs as a person, not what you want, not what we want, but understanding the needs of that person because we're all so different. Mm. And I remember in our um, previous interview with Steve Gurney, the adventure racer, he was yeah. saying there's winning and there's losing, but there's never failing because losing is just an opportunity to learn something and to take your life in an even better direction. And I thought that was quite a, a good Absolutely. reframe as well. Yeah, yeah that is, uh, I love that. Reframing love super that. Oh, it sounds like you guys are doing amazing work. <laughs> and you, wishing you all the best for your shark show, your friendships, your stability, your being madly in love with a person who deserves your love. Um, and thank you for sharing all your great ideas with us today.
Thank you. And if in doubt, have a shower, guys. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do right now. Kim, thanks for your time. I appreciate what you've given us today. Thanks for um, unraveling a lot of stuff that you've 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 said today around, you know, being an extrovert, about the fear, distrust, your vulnerability, um, your self-love, about judging yourself, about being a perfectionist and, and changing the perfectionism to expectation to appreciation. I thought I'd write that down. But yeah. thank you for your time. Um, that is our show today. Um, I freaking enjoyed it. Love yeah. you, Pete. Take Love care. You. And um, that is our show again with um, unraveling the challenges and the possibilities in our show.